Yeah, I don't know. I love I love all all aspects of it. I love being um you know some writers they're like oh fuck legals I'm not going to illegal and uh, like that. I'd fucking love illegal. Like mm. well, where else are you gonna get to spend fucking ten hours on a summer's day fucking doing like ex and find out exactly what you can do. You're not mm. gonna know that unless you're you're at illegal. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I've got still I've got a bag full of stickers there and and there's, there's I think there's two or three drip pens in there. Um, I love a drippy tag. I love mm. stickers. Um, I love it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love a fray sometimes. It's sometimes all you need to do to feel good is just go out there and just get a few frays up in the night. Rather yeah. sometimes it depends what mood you're in. Sometimes you're in the mood for a, a fucking ten hour um let's go all in at Trellick and then sometimes it's like just wanna go out with your mates and just get some froys up. Killer killer official dot com Street Culture TV Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Coward. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Coward podcast. Right. Hello, what are you doing? Killer Keller here, live and direct central London, as central as you need to be, choose to be, wanna be, you don't wanna be anywhere else. Yeah, big shout out to the originals. Uh, you know what to do, subscribe, motherfuckers. Subscribe and be a part of the revolution. If you want more revolting revolution, go to the Kellervision app. Free download, iPhone, Android. Now I'm saying, we're doing it for the culture, doing it for the people, the spread of information. Um, inside the house, we have a gentleman that uh, has been rapidly making creative moves. Very much so, uh, decades on from his uh, inception. Uh, you will know him. Capo746 inside the house. How are we, my brother? I'm good, man. Boom. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, no. 746, uh, we were getting into this conversation before we started recording, I understand. Uh, tell us about those numbers and what they signify. So, um, yeah, back in the day when I first started writing and stuff, it's like, uh, obviously, we, you know, it's been said on here many times about subway art and spray can art and all those kind of things. But I remember looking through, like, through... Um, Subway art and seeing a writer called Tacky 183. Mm -hmm. And like, um, so me and my kind of mates when we were young, uh, just starting out, it's like, yeah, we need a number. Like that, yeah, we didn't really get the, the, the whole thing about the New York, um, because the uh, 183 is the hundreds in New York, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. where they, he, they put where they're from. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we need a number of like that, but like a postcode at the time, I mean, it become cool to put like all the postcode shit, but at the mm. time, um, it weren't really about putting a postcode up. So then um, I was just thinking, oh, like that, but then, mm. yeah, my son was born um, really premature, weighed less than a pound, he weighed 746 grams. Wow. And I was like, and he, he, wow. was, he was really lucky to be able, like, really lucky to survive. Mm. So, um, yeah, that was, I thought, that's, that's the magic number, 746. Wow. And he's inside the house. He's inside the house. He's say really... hoi, say hoi. Hoi. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Audiences, we love audiences in the podcast. Um, wow, that must have been a life-changing moment, to say the least. Yeah, I was young, um, so you know it wasn't ideal um, having a kid at that age. But then, uh, yeah, and it wasn't ideal having a. It was, it was, it was a, a worrying time. But of he he pulled through. He was given zero chance to pull through. They told like you know you have a bedside manner with the doctors and stuff. They're supposed to make you feel. They straight up said. Uh, when he he was in a plastic box for three months, wow. so he was in a plastic box with all the wires and stuff until his what would have been his due date. So um, yeah, they they said like uh, you know it's not a question of if he if he sort of dies, it's when. But you know, go and talk to the box and let him hear your voice and yeah. So they they that's what they told us. Me and the mum sort of looked at each other and like what on that line? It's supposed to just, like give us hope or whatever. Yeah yeah yeah. And then uh, yeah, so fucking. Um, yeah, he survived. He's a miracle. Um, yeah. Champion of nature. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. Has he been on any missions? He's been on a few missions. Has he been on a few yeah. missions. Hopefully, his mum, his mum, doesn't want to look at this podcast. <laughs> he's <laughs> been on. He's been on a few. He's certified. He's certified. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's all you need to know. Yeah. Some people in this in the scene have met him. You met mm. a few people, didn't you? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Mm -hmm. um, where have you travelled from, my brother? Um, we've come from out of London, 30 minutes out of London, um, from Waterloo. Yeah, I love that. So That's not all the way south, but south of South London. Uh, yeah. Man, it's great when an influence comes into the city and brings such a, a plethora of colour and new style. And, you know, looking at... And I said at the top of the show, you know, the progress over the last 
maybe three years, four years. You see it with you, Capo. You know, the character is popping up a hell of a lot more. The way you're delivering the lettering, the, the, the use of um, illustrative characters combined with, you know, there's some space between the letters, there's things moving. And, it, and sometimes it, it can often feel like it's merging with what's already existing on the wall. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This is, this, this is some thought through shit that, that for me, watching your progress, uh, you know, it's, it's delivering in a whole different way compared to other people in London. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, to be honest, mate, like uh, I just, like I mentioned earlier, I think I've never been diagnosed. I think I've got ADHD and I've just got so many ideas. Um, sometimes I go with a plan and then just kind of adapt on them there kind of thing, mm. just freestyle. Really? Yeah. A lot of it is freestyle, what I do. OK, so sticking on this, it, if your game is freestyle, is that something that you like doing? I love that, yeah. So how much paint do you have to bring to the spot? That's the other thing. Like, yeah, I take a lot of paint <laughs> because it just, yeah, I just get fucking confused when I'm at, at my studio, like, taking the paint for the thing. I might have, I might, I want to do this, but then, I don't know, mate, I just, I'm a bit hectic like that. So I just take as much paint as possible and then work it out. Really? Yeah. That must be an, this is the ADHD kicking in here. Like, how, how Fully. Do you, how do you manage that? How do you make people will see your pieces and be like, "You freestyled that." Like the one I'll put it in the credit at the start. McKells, you put it in the credit at the start. Um, the one where it looks like a sticker. You've done it in Trellic, and it looks like you've actually it's actually pulling away from the wall. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah so that one was this the sort of uh, if if you took this the thing is of a sticker effect it like I've been working on a sticker effect for a couple of years and the thing of a sticker effect is mm. you can do like if you took the sticker effect away from that that dub like doubles shit really but because it had the sticker effect around it it kind of in it doesn't really matter what you've got on the sticker mm. but I wanted to go big I wanted to do the biggest like trellis has got the I think has got the biggest walls arguably like that's those yeah. two sides they're quite tall in there mammoth yeah yeah I remember painting it um for a Columbia jam a couple of years ago and mm. um like right on the top of an extendable ladder to get to the top mm. so like uh, I thought yeah we're going Trellick. Um, so I did plan it, what I was going to do. I just put um, hands and feet on the on the character as well, and I wanted to make them both stickers. And, um, and yeah, man, fucking... So that wasn't a freestyle, that was planned, but it was kind of just a... Like I said, it was a kind of dub that you just do... I don't know, it's like a ten-minute dub, basically. But with all the stuff around it, it yeah. kind of makes it look good, and that's true of anything you do with a sticker style. The sticker style enhances everything by about 90%. Right, talk to me about the sticker style, because people, you know, there's some people that, you, in fairness, don't know these details. So sticker, as in, like, the the rim of it is done in black, so it's made to look like a sticker? Yeah, so basically, like, I'm not uh, I'm not the pioneer of the sticker style, but I, I saw it, and it was just one of the things, when I come back to I've been writing a long time, yeah, but, have, yeah. um, like, 20-odd years, but when I come back to it, which was in the lockdown, so, yeah, I'm a lockdown wanker. <laughs> yeah, but when I come back to it, it's hey. like, yeah, it's one of them. But when I come back to it, um, like, uh, one of, I saw a piece at the Reading, you know, the Winner's Hall of Fame. Yeah. Have you been over there? In yeah, yes, yes, yes. So, um, oh, yeah. they got wicked walls, they got tall walls. Yeah, they got good walls. Yeah. Um, there was a piece there done there, and one of the one of the it wasn't the whole thing a sticker, it was uh, it was a smoke, a small more often. Um, I, th I think Sky High done it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And um, sort of in the early days of going around checking stuff out, I was looking at, I think I saw a photo of it actually and mm. I saw that sticker thing in there and I'd not seen it before. Mm. So one he did one of the O's was a sticker or like a smiley face or something, just had a little curled up bit. Mm. I looked at the photo and I'm fucking zooming in on the photo and then on the iPad mm. zooming in, how the fuck is it? Like, guys, what? guys. Like that. Oh yeah, mate, absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing, man. Um, yeah, one of my top writers for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, I drove over there. Drive, I saw it that was there. I drove over there just so I could kind of like reverse it engineer how he'd, how he'd done it mm. and um, you know like the photo not saying taking any way, anything away from the piece but once I was actually there in front of it mm. I was like man that's actually a lot easier than what it, it looks like kind of thing is that so perceptively you yeah, yeah. you think it's more techers than it is yeah yeah that's mm. like not taking anything away from what we've done because this is what it is but yeah the um, so I went there had a look at it and uh, and I knew straight away I was like right fucking transparent black mm -hmm. That's what that is. Really? Yeah, yeah. So when when I was in, like the camera is almost like a filter without putting a filter on it. If you look at 
any if you take a picture of a piece you could do it and it could even be a little bit kind of not everything is perfect but then um once you look at it as a photo the photo kind of um like it has an effect even without putting a filter on john so mm. it kind of cleans it up a little bit it in does, the, in yeah, the, yeah. Um, so actually, I also think your mind fills in the blanks sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, so yeah, the sticker effect, basically uh, do whatever you're going to do, put a white border around it. Um, it's really good as well for somewhere like Leak Street if you don't have emulsion, because like, sometimes it's, like, you ain't got emulsion on you. Um, it kind of works well with, like, or like if you find a, a bridge or something with a shitty background, mm. it doesn't really matter about emulsion it because you can just do your thing little bit of transparent black underneath, paint over with the white, and yeah. then it just looks like it's on top, and the actual shit background adds to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's quite good, it's quite handy. How long did it take you to kind of master these techniques? Um, I don't think I mastered anything, to be honest, but like... How uh, long do you think it's going to take you? <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, but I've been, I've, been, I've been working on it pretty consistently, probably for about two years. Wow, wow. Yeah. Trying to add at least one element in there yeah. as a sticker, if not the whole thing, but then... I get down the the thoughts of I don't want to do everything a sticker I like and be a one trick pony and yeah. just like uh, that's the guy that just does stickers I just you know it's just, at the moment that's just what I kind of like but I just want to reduce it now down to an element within the piece rather than the whole lot. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. But that character, the head, it kind of reminds me of those. Um, what those? What were those toys called? The um, with the popping heads. Oh, what Pez? Yeah. Uh, no, no. They they were toys. They were um, like He Man style toys. But you hit the bu button at the back, and the head pops off, and the head itself is like a ball. Oh mate, I don't know. Oh, I want. Well, I want one though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't you got any? <sighs> I don't know where I don't know what they're fucking called. We'll, we'll find that we'll out. We'll find it. Google that shit. You know what I'm talking about. <coughs> the round the roundhead character was years ago. Um, like the people that I used to paint with, I had I was sort of um, there's not a big graffiti culture where I'm from, but I did have a friend who come from somewhere where there was a graffiti culture. So mm -hmm. he come from South End in Essex, which mm -hmm. had like a graph scene. Mm -hmm. So the, I'm talking when we're 13, 14 kind of times, 12, yeah. 13. So when I first got into it, and um, so he used to go and live with his dad at the weekends. So big up, um, big up Jeff, J E F. Uh, later, oh, okay. later turned to Wrecker, I think, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time, so don't really chat to him now, but if he ever watches this, like, big yourself yeah. up kind of big thing. But he used, to, he used to school me in actually how to how to actually do letter structure, and, and I remember him, the first, like, lesson he gave me was, like, you have to imagine every... This is, like, 13-year-old talk, mm. but he said, like, imagine everything is a ribbon to do, like, the straight letters. He said, like, you don't want to... You want to have the proportions and everything, so he's teaching me that. But when we first started going out and stuff, obviously, there's a lot of tagging, a lot of bombing and scratching, and we used to go B&Q and, Q and um, nick the angle grind... Not nick, by <laughs> the... Uh, I've never nicked anything. <laughs> never right, nicked from anything. Bit, no, I've never nicked anything from being q and you shouldn't either. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Do not condone any of this. It's just a little story. Unless you don't have any money. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> but then, um, so being 13, you haven't really got money to buy sanding discs or whatever the fuck they are. But they're basically, like, you know, the discs that go on the angle grinders. Yeah. So we used to nick them. We used to. We used, to get, we used to get them, and then we used to break them up. So four of us, we would try and break them into four, and then we'd have a scratcher. So we used to go around scratching and everything, like glass, everything. Um, but when it come to when we eventually progressed and it comes to doing letters, um, I ain't gonna lie. I used to struggle. I used to struggle getting like um, my letters up fast. Like I used to really struggle, sort of age fourteen, fifteen. Mm. Um, so I just I was thinking about it. I was thinking like I need something that just like people will know it's me. But it's quick to do, and 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 you're gonna know straight away, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I kind of like took it to more of a. Um, so for me, it was my version of a frat because I can do it really quick. Like yeah. the, the quickest version of it is like if it's a hollow outline, it's like ten seconds, fifteen really? seconds. Really? Yeah, I done a I done a couple on the way here to be fair. Yeah. Um, but then uh, if it's like painted like one color, two color, around about forty five seconds, thirty seconds, forty five seconds. Been I've done a lot of them over the years. So it's been going twenty five years that that face. Um, but yeah, it was, it was kind of, years. but it was kind of, um, like, uh, do you remember Onyx yeah. right? or, or not, uh, remember, not, not remember Onyx, no, but, the, but you know, low, that album yeah, cover yeah, with yeah. that big face yeah, in it, yeah. like it was a bit of an influence from that. And then also London writers at the time, like, um, 
like Insta mm. used to have like mm -hmm. the teardrop mm -hmm. thing that he used to do, but then he used to do the Insta tag when it was the eyebrows that's and stuff. Right, that's right. So yeah, there was uh, I weren't trying to cat Insta, but um, Insta, but it was like that's where the um, and probably a bit of early ochre as well. You mm -hmm. know, like he had the faces in his things, like mm -hmm. quite simply done, but they look cool. Yeah, yeah. So like I think that's where the inspiration come from, and that's I, I thought you know what I'm not going to do. Um, at that time, I'm not even going to do letters. I'm just going to do that face everywhere. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. Like, um, oh, it's like Bees, we got Bees with his kind of character man. thing. Um, Tempo 33 from yeah. Birmingham, you know, the, with the acid face. Yeah. Um, there's something that I, I find, I draw to with people that are able to be hella diverse with um, their approach to graph, whether it be putting characters in or doing stickers that, physical stickers uh just embracing the whole culture as a you know it's few and far between I, i'm still not sure why that isn't embraced entirely by everybody do you know what i mean yeah i don't know i love i love all, all aspects of it i love being um you know some writers they're like oh fuck legals aren't oh, going to illegal and uh, like that i'd fucking love illegal like mm. well, where else are you going to get to spend fucking 10 hours on a summer's day fucking doing like ex and find out exactly what you can do you're not mm -hmm. going to know that unless you're you're out of legal do you know what i'm saying um i've got still i've got a bag full of stickers there and, and there's, there's i think there's two or three drip pens in there um i love a drippy tag i love mm. stickers um i love it all yeah, yeah, yeah i just love a fray sometimes it's sometimes all you need to do to feel good is just go out there and just get a few frays up in the night well yeah. sometimes it depends what mood you're in sometimes you're in the mood for a, a fucking 10 hour um, let's go all in at Trellick and then sometimes it's like just want to go out with your mates and just get some throws up yeah, yeah and I can appreciate that that feeling of he has different kinds of adrenaline mm. um, spikes doesn't it yeah I, sure. I, I, I love it when you get to a spot and because with Hall of Fames and this has always been a running conversation on the podcast often you've got time you've got time to do something really great I mean, Winnish is a great example of a of a Hall of Fame that that really holds true to its standards. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, do you ever your your aim of the game is to better the environment that you're painting in, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard, isn't it, though, with, with some Hall of Fames because it's it's not reciprocated a lot with the other people that you know that balloon in that environment. Yeah? Do you know what? Like with the whole the whole Hall of Fame thing, I think it's been said on here before. I can't remember who said it, but I was like, because I watched a few of these and um, I had one in the moment and that, and like someone said it, and I can't remember who it was, but they said like, and this is like, so when I was coming up, age that eight, was, there was like rules. Mm. There was there was these rules that kind of they ain't really about anymore. Um, and one of the things was if you go to a Hall of Fame, you've got a you've got to burn, absolutely burn the thing that you're doing, not in a disrespectful way, but like basically you turn up to Hall of Fame, you find the kind of weakest piece. And yeah. then if you're, if you think that, you know, I'm gonna, I can do better than that, yeah. then you go over that piece. But also as well, you have respect, you mulch out everything of that last piece. Mm -hmm. You don't use no shit from the previous one and add it into yours or nothing mm -hmm. stupid like that. But, you know, that happened to me three weeks ago, not that I care, but three weeks ago, Unigate, uh, me and uh, Sense, Big Up Sense. Yeah, Big Up um, Sense. Yeah, we'd done, a, we'd done a piece down Unigate. It was actually my first time painting it. Um, gone down there, done a done a thing. Like a couple of years later, a couple of weeks later, um, yeah, the character's still there and they've like, nicked a bit yeah. and that and I'm thinking, like, man, fucking, these rules don't apply anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah. saw that piece down at Unigate. I went down there for the first time, yeah, it was a banger. It was a banger. I like that spot. It's great, isn't it? I like that spot, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I didn't realise how... You don't realise how big it is, even from, like, the, the fighters and that. You don't realise actually how much walls there are to paint there, and you've got that big one at the end. It's bonkers. Yeah. That being said, that big up, Dice. If he was to have told me how you get in there in the first place, I definitely probably wouldn't have gone. <laughs> that shit does, just does not do me any favours. I'm just, Yeah, you know that kind of... You have to go across the wall. Where you've got a guy yeah. shimmy across a bit. Yeah, yeah, I ain't no shimmy, shimmy, uh, shimmy, yeah, uh, shimmy, nope. <laughs> there's, a, there's an easier way than that. Really? There's a really easy way. Oh, for fuck's yeah. sake, stop it. There's an easy way. Really? I'm going to yeah. tell you after because yeah, I don't want yeah, yeah, yeah. to bait it up. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah. a lot easier way than that. Really? I've been that way, the, the Tomb Raider way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tomb Raider, yeah. yeah. Not wanting to slip into that nasty fucking stream yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, but yeah, there's, life. there's a lot easier way, mate. Is it? Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. How often do you go out painting? How um, I, I try and paint regularly, but then um, I had like a, I had a period at the beginning 
beginning of this year where I had to slow it down just for, for reasons. Okay. Um, and I had to slow it down and it was doing me in because I was getting loads of messages, invites, you're coming here to paint because I've got, there's a lot of people yeah. that I paint with different areas and stuff. And yeah, I had to decline loads of things um, just uh, due to certain reasons and that. But those reasons are sort of gone now. So I'm kind of free to go and paint again. Mm. Yeah. So um, yeah, I try to paint a lot. I mean, I'm, I, I make art every day. I'm a tattooist. Uh, that's my job. Oh, by trade. Um, oh, yeah. Right. And luckily, I, I've I've got a sh I own a studio that has some little. I mean, I did go mad. I made like the staircase look like Leak Street at one point, but then in the end, I just cleaned it up. And you know, this probably ain't. This looks cool for me, but probably not anyone that's coming yeah, that, in. That's the problem. That is the problem. Yeah. Mean, you know. It, it, for those that have been in the pod trap, there's a lot of stuff in here, and stuff is good. But it's also telling of the kind of stuff <laughs> immersing you the whole time, just yeah. getting bigger, 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 bigger. That's fun, but not for everyone, is it? No. Um, you know, when you get like a, a 60 year old sort of kind of posh lady coming in to get a tower and then she's walking in the front scene, like, you know, it's, it's just not the, it's not the look. I try and keep the two separated a little bit. Uh, it, what, for the customers? Just, I just, yeah, I just try and keep it separated. There's a certain look to my studio. It's quite a big, big studio. I've got a couple of, um, a couple of really talented girls that work there with me. Nice. Um, and like, yeah, I just, just try and try and keep it nice in there. Like, it's quite stylish and stuff, and um, it's not too graphy. But the walls are normally all mural. They've all been reset at the moment. Big up George, um, one of the girls, Meg's boyfriend. He's um, like a really good uh, interior decorator. So he's reset everything in there. Mm. It's all black walls ready to go. Um, but it's had like it's had loads of stuff on there to be honest. I practiced some of the sticker effect in there. Did you? Yeah, so it's quite handy. But the other thing as well with painting this studio is like once you paint it in there, it needs a good kind of three or four days to air out, yeah. and you just get dust settling everywhere for about four days. So yeah, like yeah I'd, I'd just try and paint it probably once or twice a year. How do you separate uh, the professional tattooist and the activities of graph? I mean, that's that's almost like you're moonlighting in the evening to, to paint. Yeah, I mean, luckily, uh, I've been, like, I did my first, uh, like, commission, uh, spray can commission when I was 16. Mm. So from then, I've pr I've done, like, I've done loads. I've been pretty much doing them since I was 16. I mean, I'm, I don't want to admit how old I am now, mm -hmm. but I'm under 50, over 30. That's it, yeah. And, uh, so mind your business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so uh, I've been luckily I've I've been managing to do tattoos and commissions um, for the last few years, and um, you know I've done the whole thing of uh, in the early days over order, over ordering the paint, so I got a massive collection of stuff that uh, was supposed to go on the commissions but didn't. But how many how many cans do on on average do? Because just going back to the amount you must be taking out the door per piece, how mu how much minimum of paint do you have stored ready to to react with? What in my studio? Yeah. Um. I've got. I've got. I've got some. I've got a load of paint at home in the studio. I've got two big racks of paint, spray paint. Um, put it this way: I bought five thousand pounds worth off our fresh guy Dave in the lockdown. What? Yeah. And I was so I bought it. So in the lockdown, I don't know. Like, um, tattoo studios were the first to shut and the uh, and the last to open. So we were all hit really hard, and um, uh, one of, like there was even a thing like you couldn't even I couldn't even go to the studio because mm. the, the rules were so tight, especially in the first and second ones. Like you couldn't even go there, and yeah. the, you know the area where we live and the shopkeepers nearby and stuff. It's sort of it's very grassy and like oh um, they snitch on you. They would, yeah, and it's like uh, so I did I didn't do any a single tattoo in the in the whole lockdown. Some people did, and fair play to them. I didn't because I just know what it's like around where where the shop is, kind of thing. Yeah. And um, you know, there's shopkeepers that I might have fallen out with or something. They'll be looking for any kind of reason just yeah. to fucking grasp me up. So I I didn't, but still I wanted to be in and out of the studio. So I was thinking like, fucking, what can I do? Money was washing out the door every month. I lost thousands. <laughs> like literally, almost broke us in that lockdown. Um, so yeah, I thought, well, I'm gonna make a paint shop. So there was a load of these like uh, loan grants going around, mm. um, local council grants, uh, rather than a loan. So obviously grant you don't pay back, so it's free money basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I got one and I just pretty much done the whole lot on spray paint and then put a load of racks in the shop. I've obviously sold all of that and then, uh, you know, it doesn't owe me anything now. So all yeah. the leftover cans from that era, I've still got a load of them. How many is a load? What, like, a few, few hundred. 
That's good, isn't it? I've also got the um, I've got the so back in the day, like without going, I'm a bit of a tangent guy. No, but, go for it. Um, it's, it's your podcast, sir. You get in. No, so so back in the day, again with the spray can, uh, sorry, with the subway art is obviously the bible for any writer. So when you look in there, a few pages in, um, I used to look at this picture of of Lady Pink. Mm-hmm. And it showed her in her apartment, and she's got a rack yeah, of yeah, paint yeah, yeah, yeah. in her apartment. So, and I remember looking at that, and I was just fucking like, that was goals, John. You know saying, yeah, I remember yeah, looking yeah. when I was a little kid, looking at that, like, man, I fucking want my own rack. Shit, yeah, yeah. So, I ended up with my own one um, a few years ago that used to be in a shop called. There used to be a paint shop, big up, big up ranch and playground legend. Playground Legend. Ooh, you're not at that. This um, is... Playground Legend is a paint shop in Reading. Nice. And it was just across from the station in, in the Harris Arcade. You yeah, come yeah. out and you go through there. I don't Where the tattoo ever... spot is and the yeah, cigars. Yeah, yeah. Cigar. I mean, I used to work in that tattoo spot when yeah. it was above... A, um, above the shop opposite where it is now I used to work in that one for a little bit in Reading I used to live in Reading for a bit but I go in um, there for the cigars they got the nice well you go there shop. for cigars yeah um, yeah so in there um, fuck what were we talking about uh, in there, you, oh sorry, Playground Legend. Shop, yeah. yeah, sorry man. I'm just having loads of memories just come yeah. back then. So yeah, bring him in, so, bring him in. So yeah, you had uh, you had Playground Legend there. Um, at one point, uh, before he had that shop, he was a guy you'd go and see Range, and he was a guy who he used to have, have the paint in his flat in Reading. So um, I'm talking years ago. There wasn't kind of it was even before Chrome and Black kind of era, like where you could actually order paint online. There was only then talking a long time ago. There weren't too many places you could get spray paint from. Mm-hmm. But there, you could get it off Range in Reading, or there was a place in Feltham. I don't know if it's been talked about on here, but there used to be like a car spare shop. Um, have you? Has this been brought no, up? No, bring it. There was a car spare. So there's a bit of a urban legend, but the, there was a car spare shop, and there was a guy in there that used to have Beltons, only Beltons, when Belton was good. <laughs> they still are good. <laughs> I don't want to ruin a p- potential thing here, but <laughs> no, nah, fuck Belton, right? But um. <laughs> Yeah, so there was a car spare shop and you used to go and see him and the rumour was that that guy used to be a chrome angel, but I kind of never asked him. Ooh, yeah. who knows his paint, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, it, he must have been. For someone to have, like, graffiti paint, and it wasn't, like, on racks and stuff, it mm. was in a back room and you kind of had to ask him. There was mm-hmm. an old lady that worked in there that could have been his mum, I think, someone said it was his mum. Him and she used to run the shop and you kind of used to sort of, like, say, like, yeah, can I get the... Like that, oh, yeah, yeah, and she'd bring out the paint. Has that been brought up before? No. There you go, exclusives. <laughs> Exclusive. Yeah, some Folklore. people people will know about that. People in certain, certain times, it was in Feltham, um, you know, not far from Unigate in the 40s and that. These car spare shop, that's uh, before um, UPS was there and that. That's where you used to get paint from. Um, uh, so, yeah, I ended up with the, with the actual... There used to be these um, paints that don't do anymore, but they were between... A mini can and a four hundred. I think there were two hundred and fifty mil can called an Alien. Oh, okay. Do you remember them? No. A Montana Alien. No. Um, oh, yeah, I might do. Yeah, they that... weren't like the Montana ones now. That uh, yeah, no, they were more skinnier, right? They, no, they were a short, fat can, but they weren't quite as much. I think it was a three hundred mil. I, I think remember it was the graphism. I remember the the the, the, the yeah. advertisement. Um, but yeah, they were sick. Yeah. They were sick. Uh, they don't make them anymore. I did have an old can. I've lost it, but I'm um, just for like a collection of old shit, but. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a Montana Alien rack. It's like a curved rack. I don't think there's many of them um, about, but I've got the one from Playground Legend in, in my shop, yeah. And it's got bits of flecks of paint on it and stuff, and the, the label at the top is, is a bit... It's good condition, it's old, but it's a little bit bad, and I thought about restoring it, but then I thought, I don't know, I might just leave it how it was, how yeah. it is kind of thing. Yeah, because that's, that's art in itself. It is, yeah. It. It's curved, and then it's got holes in it, and it looks kind of... Yeah, like yeah, when it's full up with paint, all the paints are sticking out at angles like that, going around. It's really cool. Yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah. So, do you, you don't sell the paint in your shop? So? Uh, not anymore. No. I did. I sold a lot of paint. Why not? Why? Why, why is um, that? Well, one of the things is the area where it is. Like, if you're, the area ain't graphy, mm. so it's like and. It just, it just won't. It's just not worth it, really, mm. kind of thing. And yeah, because you'll go all. Come I've got, I've got, yeah, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I'm really busy with, um, with a lot of projects and stuff, and especially every my day bread and butter, which is tattooing. Mm. So, like the uh, to sort of do that as well. It's, I'd have to employ someone to do it, and then there's just a lot of hassle with it. So I just like, um, you know, if, and also as well, I was only really selling to a few people, and it was just chromes blacks. Yeah, hence why you've got all the stock. 
yeah. yeah. So it's like, um, but yeah, so I, I made my money out of it. I made a lot of pain out of it and it doesn't owe me anything anymore and it's just handy for commission. So that with all the stuff I've got off commissions, yeah, I've got quite a lot of paint. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Yeah. Um, Kleptomaniacs are graffiti writers. They like to collect things, the most random of things, from, you know, like tattoo guns to comic books to, you know, old, you know, um, defunct spray cans to... Yeah. I mean, you must have a mass of different collect. What's your most va what's the most treasured collectible that a lot of people would be like? Yeah, probably my tattoo machines. I've got some good tattoo machines. Oh, yeah. um, anyone that's into tattoos, I've got a machine that was actually meant for Kat Von D. I don't know if you've if you've wow. heard of her personally. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, she was like a, she was a really big tattooer. She come to fame on Miami Ink. That's right. Um, but I actually tattooed a guy years ago when I was working in Reading. Um, a guy was called Jabs, but not the Jabs, uh, the, the writer Jabs, yeah. uh, who was actually, the writer Jabs was an early inspiration, to be fair, because he's from yeah. my area. Yeah. Um, but not that Jabs, there's another guy um, who's a machine builder. I tattooed him, he didn't tell me he made machines or nothing, but he made these amazing, like, hand-carved, it was one, like, sort of piece of metal, and he would carve it out of that, and he used to do kind of like biomechanical, bio-organic kind of frames, but he made a filigree. Wow. It was really, the, each one is a bit of art, and um, he's amazing, this guy. I'm still on Facebook with him now. But he made one for Kat Von D, with, which was like a Baroque filigree kind of frame, because she does a lot of that kind of style. Yeah. But um, he was taught, he knew her, and he was going to make her this frame, but then um, she got so big, she stopped answering emails. Yeah. So he was kind of like, with this machine, I'd done the tattoo for him, and then he sent me a message after, really happy with the tattoo, do you want this machine? It was supposed to be for Kat Von D. I was like, yeah. Yes, please, thank so, you very much. Yeah, I've got, got, got a decent machine collection, but they're all basically museum pieces now because his tattooing has moved from... The, a lot of people still do use the old um, coil noisy machines, but yeah. um, me personally now, like, when the wind changes, you've got to adjust your sails. Like, I've gone to the wireless pens now. Yeah, with, wireless with, with pens? Yeah, wireless pens with cartridges. No way. So there's no long bar that goes that clips to the machine. Now everything, the spring and everything, is all within a cartridge, just clips in the end. And, uh, you know, back in the day, you wanted to do a tattoo, you would have to lay out different machines for different stuff with yeah. different needles set up and different um, softnesses of the springs and stuff, the tensions of the springs. But now everything is literally, I can just have my different cartridges out. It's just game changing. Wow. No, no customers tripping wires up and knocking inks over or no. anything like that. It's literally, I can just get the machine and just take the thing out, put another one in, boom, I've gone from a liner to a shader. It's amazing, man. Wow, I didn't know the advancements on tattooing had just progressed like yeah. seismically. That and the iPad is the biggest like thing for tattooing. It's just changed it, you know. Yeah. Like you can just there's even apps now that if you get a realistic face, rather than spending five hours a night before, I did this for years. Mm. Um, drawing out on, you know, sometimes putting uh, tracing paper over like a laptop screen to try and trace over yeah, a yeah. face or something like that. Now you just put the thing in the in the app slide a bar across and you can see the level of detail that you want and it just gives you the outline and, and the contrast points and every all the points of reference that you need to do a realistic tattoo it's done in two seconds so then that goes on the ipad into procreate print and then now i've got a stencil printer that i can put the printed out bit of paper in the stencil in another slot press a button 30, 20 seconds and then it comes out ready to go Ooh. It's 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 amazing, but I had to. I've been a tattooist for a long time. I've been yeah. tattooing since I'm younger than him. Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, I've, I've kind of. I was on the verge of. I started tattooing when all of those TV shows started coming out, and the advancement since then is just crazy. Crazy, and uh, where where something becomes easy for you, it also becomes easy for the competition and younger people and things like that. Do you, do you think? I mean, and it still has re relation with with graph because you know, everything has moved fast. Yeah. Um, tattooing, especially in a creative field, is uh, a lot of it's for the gram. A lot of it's you know, but everyone wants a tattoo, and yeah. and people that have not had all that decades of experience can suddenly just grab this, and it ain't it bad. It's, you know what I mean? This is this comment below. Is it good? Is it bad? What do you think? Um, I think it's good. Uh, I'm not like a, a gatekeeper in in any way to do with anything. I just think that um, even though I'm from that kind of on the, I mean, some people would say it's old school now, but I was kind of um, working with and and mentored by old school tattooists. That, mm. um, you know, there not really many of them about anymore. But 
I think anything that makes anything easier for anybody is just a good thing. Yeah. And um, people have got to do what they're going to do. Yeah. A lot of people don't like home tattoos. That's like a very old school mentality. Oh, you can't can't tattoo from home. You have to do an issue. Or the pin Man. thing as well, you know. The yeah, the hand poke. Yeah. yeah. So it's called the hand poke. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah um, but me personally, it's just like, mate, if you want to get into it, what's, just, just do your thing. Just do your thing. If that's, if that's what you want to do, crack on. You know, like I say, the whole gatekeeper mentality, I'm not really for that. But also, there's something to be said about that experience that you have that, you know, takes a little while for other people to, to garner. And um, experiences that you go through, you can always refer back to, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Graph uh, very much has the same thing. You mentioned the lockdown before. Um, and there was this resurgence of... Uh, uh, I particularly like the old school guys. The old school guys coming back was just like music it's fucking great yeah um but yeah that that really emphasized actually um the importance of uh progress within a scene like it was almost like it, it, it gave it a, a a new boost of attention um whether the authorities liked it or not yeah it's, it was a response wasn't it it was um i mean the way that the way that i looked at it was like i mean with the amount of fear and and everything that went through the um, would have come out around the time of the lockdown with all the stuff we've been shown on the news and stuff. I mean, it was it was scary times. Mm. Um, and the way I looked at it was, well, if the world's going to fucking end, then what does it matter if I just go and absolutely batter the place? Mm, mm, mm. So, um, yeah, that's what I did. Mm. Um, yeah, man, fucking lockdown was, was good for that. Like, it was... And, and also, as well, I knew in that time that it was an era. Mm, like, mm. when you're younger, sometimes you don't realise that the era that you're in is just a moment in time that's, that's never going to be the same again. You don't really get that until you're a little bit older and more experienced. But in that lockdown time, I knew that this was a, this was an era. Was I an knew era. this was a real era where you're going to get a lot of creativity and people coming out of the woodwork and people that weren't doing it so much coming back and new people wanting to try it. I knew what it was like, almost like a the it's like a golden age of graph for mm. this time. What's it with the human psyche that doesn't understand? that concept living in the moment an era defining thing it's very easy to pass off as you know with all the you know hype and crazy shit that goes on throughout our days and lives and you know what the latest over the fence gossip is and getting all immersed in shit it's like you forget to live in a moment don't you yeah man um yeah totally like i don't know what it is but the older i get the, the quicker things are going and it's like you just gotta you can't put nothing off you just gotta do it and it's like sometimes you gotta force yourself to do stuff and, and just get out there and, and, and create you know mm. um, because a couple months go past three months go past four months and before you know it another year's gone past I just yeah I just think time's speeding up Mm. I think it's that CERN experiment. I think that's what it is. They're messing around with that CERN. I think it, they've... Are talking about the CERN experiment? They, so the thing that I'm not familiar. Got... I'm not... Okay, go so on, there's, go there's... Oh, God, there's a thing... Uh, Hitting well, down the rabbit hole. I've never, uh, never described it before, but there's a... There's a uh, it was a faraway comment, but the actual CERN thing is uh, the Hadron Collider where they're trying to recreate... Oh, the particles. The particle yeah, accelerator yeah, 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 where they're the smashing particles yes, together. Yes, 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 yes. I you know, know. um... I just reckon we're, you know, it's saying like that. Fucking time's going quicker, man. Everyone mm. is saying it. It might be. It could be. Uh, it could not be. Well, you know, certain things have come to light today. Where technology is proving that, uh, you know, it, it precedes life. What do you reckon the future of graph is? Like, heat-sensitive, you know, drones and crazy, you know... Yeah, I mean, uh, big up T Bone by the way. Yeah. Um, on the way up here on the train, I was looking through uh, through the gram, um, trying to find actually the directions to here, and then uh, I saw a story, and it's about the T T Bone put up a a sort of picture of a sign with saying about drones flying around with uh, heat sensitive infrared cameras on and stuff, and like, yeah. That's uh, that's really worrying. Yeah, 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 that's crazy. Yeah, these missions have got to be quick now. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or you got to be a good aim, a good shooter. Yeah, man. <laughs> or we we've got to develop some kind of ghetto budget, um, anti heat signature clothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we do that. Maybe yeah. if we if we all go in like uh, climbing the fridge an hour before we go out. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know, man. But yeah, that's uh, it's, it's worrying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Only do, only do riversides. That's what it is. Yeah. Stay in the water. 
Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. I mean, you know, it's a response. And all of this is a response, isn't it? Technology responds to, you know, even veganism and, like, you know, the pendulum swings now. Manufacturing industry is over on the vegan side, so don't think it's safe at all. All, all your uh, vegetables have, you know, got crushed rabbit in from where they're processing from the field so quickly. Uh, and and the, the truth is, is that it goes where we go, where the attention goes, doesn't it? It does, yeah. No, that's interesting, that veganism thing. Because I did hear saying about the... Uh, there's loads of things like that, like um, counter things to it, like the indiscriminate killing of all these different kinds of species of, of mammals but when they're trying to harvest crops and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's just... It just does your ending, doesn't it? There's just so much stuff out there like that. Well, there's also... It's controlled propaganda because it's designed... I mean, even the, the heat-sensitive... It could just all be a facade. Mm. Just, it could just all be a little, little story, like a lot of these illegal conversations on this podcast, you understand? But there is this, there is this, there's a side to it where you're like, if, if, the ve- if, the ve- if the vegan industry are doing well, then surely the meat industry is the one prop- propagating that, propagating that, th- this kind of negative, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, listen, I'm all for what anyone wants to eat. Yeah, whatever. do what you want. Yeah, whatever yeah. The, the, you know, however they want to formulate their turds is, like, completely up to them. <laughs> but all I'll say is one thing, like, uh, I mean, we we try and eat clean, try and eat consciously. Um, I've been vegan before. Um, didn't feel too great doing it, whatever. I'm not sure if I've done it properly, but I think you've got to take a load of supplements and pills and mm. stuff if you do it properly. But, um, you know, you're never going to tell, like, his granddad that he ain't having a fucking roast dinner on a Sunday, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's still, yeah. like, there's people that live, you know, they're not going to adopt that whole, um, you know, Californian thingy lifestyle no. or whatever. They're not going to do Avocados that. They and yeah, yeah, they don't give a shit. You know what, as well, like, going back to your grandparents, your dad, like, man, my, my nan died at 95, and she never quit eating the things that she always ate. I was going to say, yeah, she probably, she wasn't a vegan, was she? Didn't give for no. Absolutely. I've got nothing yeah. against vegans, by the no, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing against, you do whatever you want to make yeah. your poo, that's yeah. completely up to you. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's the quote. That's yeah, the quote man. of the podcast. Yeah, that's a clip at the beginning. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's it. However you make your poo, yeah. it's up to you. That's it. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people passing away out over nothing at the moment. Um, but that's a wider conspiracy theory that... Uh, Big up Char, big up Arrow, all, all uh, uh, of the uh, what uh, shot callers. Mm, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I wanna if I wanna go down that line of chat to be honest, but it's I, you know it is deep. It's deep. It is. <sighs> do you reckon? Do you reckon the drone thing is is a fact? I reckon it probably is. It's not going to cost them a lot to do it. Um, I mean, you can get a pretty sick drone now. I don't have one, but I've seen them for sale. You can, a couple hundred quid, you can get one with, like, a better camera than an iPhone mm. for 200 quid. Mm. So it's like, they probably have got them. Mm. I'd imagine they have. I'd Flying like to... over electrics, though, that's mm. the thing. That's a, you know, the, the biggest case in point was a friend of mine was had a drone and was flying it over King's Cross. Right. Oh, he got himself into a hole. In fact, it actually deactivated itself. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, I'm just thinking that if they can go up pretty high, if they're just sat up there 200 metres in the air, they don't really have to be above the thing itself, but they they can kind of take in, like, a, an area, yeah. then, yeah, maybe they can, but to be honest, mate, like, you know, just thought about it today. I haven't really deeped it too much, yeah. but... Well, we'll let them do that. We'll yeah. let them deep it out there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, this is fresh intel, you understand? Yeah, fuck the drones, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, what's the future, my brother? What's the future for you? Maybe inventing a graph drone. That could be the future. Oh yeah, it's gonna be drone graph wars. Yeah, maybe we if if we maybe we could send up counter drones to fuck their drones up. <laughs> that could be the future. That might be what I work on this afternoon. <laughs> an, an anti drone drone. Um, no, future for me is uh, me and me and my son. We we're, we're working on a graphic novel. Oh, wow. Um, well, I've been working on it for the last three years. He wrote it. I'm illustrating it. Um, it's just turned it's turned a few corners but it's just turned a massive corner literally in the last week where the format inside of it now it's looking proper wow yeah any storyline or plot to indulge yeah. so there's two there's a short version and there's a there's a really quick version what it's about and there's a slightly more in-depth explanation the quick version is that would be the keywords of 1800s mountains mushrooms Spirit, spiritual afterlife, bounty hunters, pirates, murder, redemption. 
I love a bit of redemption. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it follows a, uh, a character called Slade Coulter, who's uh, like a mountain man, um, bounty hunter character, ex-soldier. It's set in the in the late sort of 1870s um, in America. Um, he gets in, into an altercation at the beginning of the, of the story. Um, it's a long story, going to be uh, released over a few issues, so we're just coming to the end of issue one at the moment. Um, yeah, so he uh, he gets in a in a fight in a bar. It's got a lot of tropes from westerns and things like that. There's a lot of like uh, familiar things in it. Um, so it, it, there's a bar fight. There's a horse chase. There's um, bounty hunters. There's all this kind of stuff. But basically, he get the short the short story of it is he gets into a fight um, for reasons kills three people, connected people, flees over the border into Canada and then lives his life because he's that kind of guy anyway. He's a bounty hunter, hunter kind of character. He disappears into the mountains and sort of lives off the land in the, in the most uh, harshest terrain where no one is going to find him, basically. Um, during that time, he has, a, he has a hunting accident. He gets killed, um, or is close to death, gets killed. Um, and his body... His um, soul leaves his body, goes into the into the afterlife, kind of in the spirit mm. world. But while his body's still there, it gets uh, populated with like mushrooms and and different kinds of fauna and flora start mm. growing into him. He sort of like it. Um, he gets found by a tribe of Indians and native people that look at him and and see that he looks like. Um, a cave drawing that they've seen um, so they look at him as a prophecy because he's got the mushrooms coming out of him and we actually base that on there was a cave in Algeria uh, 5,000 years ago there's a cave painting of uh, it's called the the bee shaman if anyone wants to look that up have a look at it it's yeah, like one of the look. oldest it's actually one of the oldest bits of, of not graffiti but a drawing on a wall is this bee shaman it's a it's a, this character, humanoid character with mushrooms coming out of it so they see him there um, with the mushrooms growing out of him they all look at each other like that's the that's the the prophesized yeah, yeah, thing yeah. we in our in our mythology kind of thing. So then they take him with him, take him uh, his body with them, nurse him back to health, um, and start sort of teaching him about spirituality and and the afterlife and according to their traditions, which is based on like some experiences I had going to Peru to I don't know if you heard of ayahuasca. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah so I've done a few, I've done a few ayahuasca ceremonies in South America um, back in the day. Oh. So we're, I'm trying to like blend a lot of that and the visuals are, are kind of a lot of the things that I've pulled from my own experiences and in the, in the in the visions that I've had. So the visions you've been illustrating across the book? Yeah. Dude, this is one big, I mean, mushrooms coming out of bodies, like this is some, you know, illustrative party you've got going on. Like, oh, it's, 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 it's a, I've right. been working on it for three years, it's very involved, um, I'm, I can't wait till it's actually, like it's very, very near now to actually being a tangible thing that you can actually, I mean, I'll show you after, we've got a digital version on yeah. the books app, um, you can flick through it, but yeah, I want to bring it, we're going to obviously bring it out digital so you can look at it on an iPad, it's quite cool looking at it on an iPad because um, you can zoom into the captions and stuff and study the artwork a bit more, but we've wow. gone in on it because yeah. it hasn't been done to a um, done to a timeline that we're self-publishing it, so there's no like um, pressure on us from any higher ups to, for it to have to be done by a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, I've just been work I've been working on it pretty consistently, but then like a lot of creative people, I have like cycles, like I just want to paint for one month and then I don't want to draw anything and then, yeah. then yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a sick story. He gets uh, taken into the tribe, uh, taught their ways um, and sort of, yeah, goes goes with them. But then the whole time he's actually had a, a hit put on him by the relations of the people that he killed back in America. Mm. So um, then you have like a... A suicide squads kind of mix, like mishmash kind of uh, odd bunch of um, of bounty hunters that are on his trail, and uh, so there's like a back in the day flashback. Then there's a, there's a time jump um, to when they eventually they've narrowed it down to where he could be, mm. and then they all meet for a, a big uh, battle royale at the end. It's wow. uh, it's it's going to be really cool. <laughs> and um, if anyone wants to check that out, we've just started uh, an Instagram for that. Um, it's seven four six studios with a Z. Had to do a Z because the S was taken, but mm -hmm. seven four six studios. Um, you can follow the progress. That's uh, there'll be there's another story coming after that, but we just have to get issue one out of this one until we can go on to the next one, which is really cool as well. See, what I'm saying this. You, I hope you're getting an understanding here, people, that that this is a, the dynamism here for uh, creativity. Like, I mean, I was mentioning, you know, the the sticker the stick of the world combined with the characters combined with the piece but tattooing co you know comic books uh 
illustrative, you know, just so much wealth of creative output on loads of different mediums. So yeah. sick. Big up the ADHD gang. <laughs> Every time. Timeless, forever times. That should be a crew name. Yeah. ADHD gang. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, man. Let's start it. ADHD <laughs> crew. ADHD crew. Come yeah. on. You know what it is. <laughs> Capo told you. Uh, thank you so much, my brother. No, you're welcome, man. That it's been a fantastic. pleasure. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, man. Six in the building. Yes, uh, look, we're out like things out of fashion. Serves you right. That was fucking great. More, more to come. All right, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right, crime don't pay, but even today, don't talk to it and I wouldn't. Nice one, Capo. Wicked. Peace. Good. That right.